everybody. Comedian Brad Williams here. I am excited to introduce your next speakers. These two are true aviation legends and people that I personally look up to. John and Martha King, please come up to the stage. When we got married, we decided we were going to be equal partners in everything we would do. And ever since then, I've been struggling to be an equal partner. And I want to make it clear right now, Martha's only a little bit better pilot than I am. All right. You know, uh, entrepreneurs, we believe, uh, contribute to aviation safety. And uh, entrepreneurs shape the world. The history is full of entrepreneurs who had a passion about something and were able to change the world because of that passion. Uh, and we all have an op opportunity because we live in a time and a place where we can use our passion in aviation to run a profitable aviation business. And that profitable aviation business allows us to improve everybody's lives, our own lives, and make a positive influence on the aviation community. We think it's very good for the aviation community. And we think entrepreneurship uh, helps people improve the lives of everyone they touch. So that brings up the interesting question. What does entrepreneurship have to do with safety? And the point is that a profitable business generates cash, and that cash you can use to create a safety product that you can sell profitably, allows you to market a product with a safety message. Being profitable makes any aviation business safer. And the reason is, as I'm sure you're already aware, safety costs money. There's training involved, there's sometimes equipment involved, time involved, and all of that is an investment of money. And a business has to be profitable in order to afford good risk management. An unprofitable business, as we learned and some of you may have previously learned, will be short on cash. Some expenses, when you're short on ta cash, take priority. Things like uh, wages, aircraft fuel and leases, utilities, rent. Most of those have to be paid right when they're due, no questions. Some of them you can push a little bit, but not much. When cash is tight, risk management programs often get deferred. They get put under the category, if you will, of, well, this is important, but it's not urgent. We'll use that cash today to pay the aircraft leases, and we'll get back to the risk management program when things pick up a little bit. But that brings, obviously, some risk to the business. So how do we ensure that we have a profitable business? Well, John and I are going to share some tips and lessons that we've learned over uh, our 50 years in this business, plus having gone bankrupt in an earlier business, the lessons we learned from that. And, and there are some of the principles that we have got in our new book, Lift, how to uh, start, run, and grow your own successful business. And the way we introduce that is... We suggest, and Martha and I always make up stuff. We make up stuff about uh, Black Square, you're there. We make up a lot of things in aviation, but we made up something here. We suggest that we all play Scrabble with TNT, and I'll explain that. It's, it's, it's stupid stuff that we make up to, to help us all remember it. Now, we think that that is your way to get ahead with an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, and it works whether you're an entrepreneur or you're employed by someone else. Play Scrabble with TNT. Uh, so Martha and I have a lot in common with you. We've already talked about it. We're, we're nuts about flying and, and we're nuts about aviation. And uh, as I said, we've been in partners in this business now for, for 50 years. Um, uh, and we think one of the things that's interesting about aviation and business, they have a lot in common. And one of the things is that risk management is important in both. It's how you keep a business going, and it's how you keep an airplane going, and how you keep your lives going when you're flying in an airplane. So we think risk management is key to both of them. This now, morning we're gonna make 
uh, two tall promises for you. First of all, we're going to reveal the surprising most important consideration for success in life. And secondly, the dynamite tool that gets results from other people every single time. So, this was our first business. Yeah, Martha and I uh, alluded to this earlier. We've been broke and not broke. And I can tell you right now, we like not broke a lot better. Uh, we've tried both. We, did, we didn't enjoy broke at all. And one of the reasons, I think the key reason we went broke is we were in a business of servicing vehicles and we didn't have any passion for that. We didn't even enjoy it. And when you don't have a passion for something, and, and, and we, we were in that business because we wanted to be big time operators. We wanted to make a lot of money. And we sold franchises. We had about 50 franchises across the country. We just wanted to be big time operators. And when you're in a business just to make money and things get tough, you, you uh, wish you weren't in the business anymore. And when you don't wish you weren't in the business anymore, you're not gonna persist when things get tough, you're not, you're not, it's, it's not gonna work out well. And it didn't work out well. And we went broke and we said, wow, that hurt. Let's not do that anymore. Let's do something for the fun of it. So. What we did is we set up a business teaching live weekend, two day ground schools for pilots uh, to get them past the written exams. We teach the classes on Saturday and Sunday and the FAA would come and uh, give the tests on Monday. We had already gotten our private certificates and our instrument ratings and we had a, we were nuts about flying and probably one of the reasons that we didn't do well in, in the automobile servicing business was because we were out flying too much of the time. But we designed the business so we could fly around the country, talk to pilots, um, teach pilots, and just have a good time in aviation uh, while we were waiting for a serious business to come along. So what we decided over time is that the way you succeed is you find a contribution that other people will reward you for. At the time we got started in the two-day ground school, the typical way to do ground school was classes two nights a week for eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks, which worked if you were in a densely populated metropolitan area. But there were a lot of rural areas in the country that had a lot of pilots or would-be pilots and not really enough density um, to have good classes. And besides, a lot of these people would have to drive 100 miles into town to take a ground school. And doing two th that two nights a week for eight or 10 weeks just wasn't a practical thing for them. So our alternative was, two-day weekend ground schools in a hotel. They could come in with their families, the families. We tried to do it at hotels that had indoor pools. The family could enjoy being in town, playing in the pool while they took their ground school and took the test. And along the way, we found out about habits of successful people. Well. What we, what we believe is that the way you get ahead in life is find something that you can do for other people that they will pay you money for. And we found that people would pay us money to teach weekend ground schools. And it's something, it's something we enjoyed doing, and it's something that people would pay us money for. So that was, that was our trick. And we, the way you find this thing that, 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 people will, that you can do for other people and they'll pay you money for is practice what we call play. And that's a, we were going to talk about play, Scrabble with TNT. The first part is play. And play says, the P is have a passion. The L have, have uh, lots of interests. So if you, if you, you're more likely to find something that you can do for somebody if you have lots of interests. And the A is always learning. 
And if you have lots of interest and you're always learning, you're likely to find something you can do for somebody that they'll pay you for. And, and the why is yet again. And, and, and that means you keep circling back and doing it over and over again. And that, that means that these become habits. So if you have a habit of having passions, having lots of interest, and being always learning, you're more likely to be a successful entrepreneur. And, and that's our philosophy. And that's why we, that's why we talk about play. In our view, life is like a game of Scrabble. How many people in here have ever played Scrabble, the board game? Oh, a bunch of you, okay. Well, as you know, in the great game of Scrabble, the board game, you get seven tiles that you can use to make words and they have different values. And what you try and do is make up words with those that have uh, that are high value words based on the value of each letter. And you only get seven and you pull them blindly from a pile and you don't know what letters you're gonna get until you're done. That's the board game. But in the game of life for Scrabble is much more fun, much better. Because are you, you going to tell them what a Scrabble letter is? Well, I'll get there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, in, in the game of life, for Scrabble letters, every area of knowledge where you know more than other people do, we consider to be a Scrabble letter. And it's a resource for you as an entrepreneur whether your own business or entrepreneurially working for someone else, what you can do is take those areas of knowledge, just as if they were Scrabble tiles, and combine them in order to make words, and those words become contributions that you can make to the aviation community and to uh, other people in your life in general. So in life, the Scrabble rules say that there's no limit. You're not limited to seven tiles. You can have as many as you want, and you don't have to choose them blindly. You get to pick and choose what you want your Scrabble letters of life to be. And then, over time, as you get more and more areas of knowledge where you know more than other people, what you can do is work on how do I combine those in different ways in order to produce a contribution that other people will reward me for, whether that reward is in dollars and cents, in wages, in sales, or in personal satisfaction to you if you're working with, for instance, a nonprofit. Our story in Scrabble Letters goes like this. First of all, our first Scrabble letter, as you can probably guess already, is aviation. We've been nuts about aviation for a long, long time. Uh, that doesn't do much for you in and of itself. So our second Scrabble letter is we learn to teach ground schools. When we first started doing the two-day ground schools, we just had printed posters and we'd go around to local FBOs and ask if we could put up a poster and say, if we get people, we'll uh, pay you a small percentage of the class to be able to use your classroom for that. And that's how we started uh, doing our two-day ground schools. Uh, we got a little bit better than that and we started doing uh, ground schools with oh, eight to 10 people, and here I'm in a classroom, I'm sorry for the uh, poor quality of the photo, and I'm using an overhead projector. We started with blackboards and then went to overhead projectors. Anyone remember using overhead projectors? There's a few people in there, John, maybe we, we, somewhat close we, to our we age. We thought we were high tech. Right. Right, when we went to, the, we had transparencies for all the stuff that we wanted to communicate and we put those in there. We were really, uh, we were willing to work really hard at that because we loved the aviation, we loved talking to the people and uh, uh, it was very rewarding to us. Our passion meant there was no limit to how hard we were uh, willing to work on it. And uh, so we, we put in a lot of work and we did 50 ground schools a year when we were traveling around these 
uh, uh, these, uh, we made a circuit of cities and we we're traveling around that circuit of cities. We did a ground school every weekend. We did 50 weekends a year for 10 years. So we were. And the part of the way we were able to do that is because we got familiar with direct mail. We joined a direct marketing club here in San Diego. Uh, we went to direct marketing seminars and conferences, and we would mail out brochures to pilots within about a 300 mile radius of where we wanted to hold the classes. That's back in the day when the list, a uh, full list of student starts and pilots was available to us from the FAA. And when we started doing that, doing the direct mail out to people, uh, we'd have classes of 100, 120 people. And, and as John says, that's what we did uh, 50 weekends a year for about 10 years. And that meant we gave the same ground school. Martha would be in the, um, uh, the instrument, instrument instructor class, and I'd be in a private commercial and flight instructor class. And we, were, we gave uh, those same classes uh, for 50 weekends a year for 10 years. We gave them for 500 times. So by the time we got done with the 500 times, um, we, we had our lines down. We, we had our jokes down. Uh, we had ways to get into it without confusing people, supposedly. Uh, <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. And, and uh, so finally, we wound up, we, we got physically tired. And we wound up putting the courses on video uh, and, and, and playing the video with us in the room, but we had a projector. We played the a projector in the classroom. So here's John on the projector in the classroom uh, playing the video. And uh, fi finally, one of our students came to us and said, you should put these courses on video and sell them on video. And I said, that just goes to show you don't know one damn thing about our business. It won't work on video because it requires our personal presence to work and it won't work on video. And the guy says, well, I don't know how you can say that if you haven't tried it. So eventually we tried it on video and uh, so here we are, it, it worked on video. Um, we ended up with our own control room and our own studio. Um, and and uh, we got uh, we use what they call a blue screen, which is chroma key. You can tell the camera, look, wherever you see blue, I want you to put video from from some other source there. But wherever you see the something other than blue, like us, I want you to keep it. So what happened? Let's go to the next slide, if you would. What happened is that I wound up uh, in front of a sectional chart. And that's how we did that. We had that blue background, and wherever there was blue, they replaced it with a, with a sectional chart. So we got, we got the, the video got better over time. Uh, and uh, so we wound up at one point teaching half the pilots in the country learning to fly because the video got better, and it worked. And, and it, it helped people, and we wound up being able to sell it. And we still had the Scrabble letter of uh, direct mail, so we were able to do direct mail. And... When we originally were selling the courses, we were selling them in VHS and some in beta. Anyone in here still have a VHS player? <laughs> a few people, a few people. Uh, VHS came and went well, since we started in the ground school business. And as laptops came in, we <clears throat> learned to uh, put our courses on to um, uh, DV, uh, first of all CDs and then DVDs and cut up the lessons so that they had a, a short lesson followed by some FAA qu style questions and that made it a lot easier for learners to really connect the questions with the subject material and, and remember the material. Then we uh, when the internet really got some muscles, uh, we started delivering the courses over the internet, which made learning easier for the students, more mobile. And then um, we started selling marketing on the internet, and that made it easier for people to find, it, find us and easier for us to buy. So this summarizes John and Martha's Scrabble letters, and we're thinking that that... The Scrabble letters are the key for us to be able to eat regularly for so long. Um. And 
So why did we end up teaching more than half the pilots in the country, and, and why are we where we are? We think the biggest thing is what John has just said, the difference is play. The difference is fun and passion, and, and the focus on doing something that you really enjoy, as uh, we have uh, in this business. We've had tough times, the uh, uh, oil embargoes, um, uh, various recessions. Uh, you all know in the aviation business, you're survivors, and survival has been necessary. But if you're if you've got a passion of what you, about what you're doing, it's worth it to continue. So, so it's, it's very likely that your first uh, uh, Scrabble letter is that passion for aviation, like we all share together. So uh, what we're saying is convert that, make it valuable, and, and add it with other things, and you fi finally put all those things together and you spell something finally. And so that's what we're saying is, Put things together, combine them with your passion for aviation, and and and, uh, and you make make a make a word out of it. Make, make something, a contribution. Make a contribution to other people. Okay. Now we've been talking. Also, you should play Scrabble with TNT. So what's the TNT? Well, TNT is three letters. It's trust, need, and triumph with a solution. To get anything done in life with other people with other people, they need to trust you. And you trust someone who has your interest at heart, is predictable, and plays by fair rules. So what we're saying is, as an entrepreneur, a key part of it is that you're a trustworthy person and you're seen as a trustworthy person. So we're saying, take the time to focus on the concept of trust and how you can enhance it. Now the need, says you s seek out other people's needs. So you seek to understand rather than to, to be understood. And you locate the needs other people have. And, and we use the term WIFM. That stands for what's in it for me. Uh, and w we're saying you're sitting here thinking about WIFM. Why, why am I listening to this? We're thinking about WIFM. Everybody is thinking about WIFM all the time. So what you need to do as an entrepreneur, if you want to sell anything to anybody, is you think about their WIFM. What are they going to be thinking about if they're thinking about what's in it for me? But it's not just if they want to sell something, John. It's also if you just want to accomplish results in your own company or your own relationships. You are always working with and through people. So to get results through others, it's customers, it's fellow workers, it's vendors. You're thinking about their with them. And the last T is you triumph with a solution to other people's needs. And so we're thinking TNT is how you get things done through other people. You're thinking about the trust, their needs, and, and how you have, can have solutions to their needs. And so that's we make up these crazy words. But, so we're saying if you want to get ahead, play Scrabble with TNT. Go ahead, Martha. Now, a lot of times starting entrepreneurs are confused about what a business is. Um, you know, a lot of people will come into our business, they'll, they'll look at the building and say, wow, you have a great business here. And believe it or not, that annoys us because a, a, a building is not a business. Employees aren't a business. Equipment is not a business. A business is. Martha, are you going to tell them what a business is? It's the identification of a customer need or want that you can fulfill profitably. And so when people come to us and say, What's the first thing I need if I'm going to go into business? If what we always answer is, you need customers. You can get the building if you need it. You can get the equipment if you need it. Um, you can get the employees if, you, if and when you need them. But what you really have to do first is identify that customer want or need that you can fulfill profitably. Most of us in this room already have because we have customers that want flight training and so we've identified that need but there may be varieties, there may be niches, there may be different flavors of that flight training and we need to make sure that we've identified what our particular customers uh, are looking for and that we're providing solutions to that. 
We also suggest it helps to be what we call an other-centered organization. And that means you're thinking about other people, and that's how you know about their needs, and you're thinking about that all the time. So we suggest you make your organization be focused on what we call being other-centered. And, and we try and do that at King Schools. For instance, when we write a letter to someone, it's, it's company policy, whether we're doing an email to each other or an email to somebody else or a letter. The first word in that letter has got to be you or your. And it's, it's a lot awkward to, to try and start every letter you make with you, but it makes you think about them and what they're thinking about. So if, why would you write a letter to someone if it weren't about them? So we suggest that, that, that it pays to be an other-centered organization, and it makes you stand out. I, I have been talking with people, and I said, do you have any of my letters to you uh, available? They said, well, no, you really write good letters. And I, and I said, well, I'll tell you why you think we write good letters. The reason you think we write good letters is they're about you. Look at the last dozen letters we've sent you and tell me the first word in the letter. And, was, and we always try and make it so you is the first word in the letter. And people uh, don't even pick up on it. They don't realize it starts with you, but they think the letter is important to them. And so uh, that is a powerful tool for getting people to pay attention to your letters. Um, so your success in business will help you communicate your message of safety and it will the cash that you generate from being profitable will give you the power to promote safety to pay for your own safety programs to uh, to provide a safety message to the community. Now, you, al you already know this, but I want to suggest that when you teach someone to learn to fly, you do very powerful things for them. And it, it, uh, when we talk to people who are using our courses, they mean a lot to them personally because when you teach someone to fly, you change who they are and how they feel about themselves forever. It, flying uses up everything you have. It uses your mental skills, it uses your physical skills, it uses your emotional skills. It uses up everything you have. It completely consumes people. And so when they learn to fly, it changes them. And, and, and who, how they define who they are from that moment on is that they're a pilot and they fly. Uh, so you do that for them and it's just wonderful. And uh, it's, it's a great contribution to the aviation community. It's a great contribution to those people individually. And congratulations on changing people's lives. Okay. The favorite yeah. quote I have came from Mary Shu at a seminar maybe 20 years ago, and we were talking about the importance of marketing and asking flight schools, uh, what business do you consider yourself to be in? And they, some would say charter and others, flight schools, tailwheel training. And Mary Shu, she'll be speaking to you this afternoon, said, I make people's dreams come true. What a powerful mission statement for all of us. I make people's dreams come true. What can we do better to make a better world than a statement like that? So, Martha, do we have any suggestions we have some, for, for entrepreneurs? Well, for goals, I would suggest, first of all, have a habit of learning very deeply get very knowledgeable about a lot of different things because you never know how they're going to combine later on in order to allow you to make more valuable contributions. Get one new passion every year of whatever because it adds so much to your life and so much possibility for the future and develop at least one way you can use TNT, trust, need, and triumph in the area of your passion. That one new passion every year thing, as you probably know, uh, Martha and I uh, w wound up getting every category in class of uh, pilot and flight instructor certificate. 
And when we got them all, we were disappointed because we were, we're enjoying learning new things. And we were uh, learning all of those things and we did it for many, many years. And it was a disappointment when we ran out of new things that, uh, that we wanted to learn. Because part of the fascination of that was seeing how learning different types, categories, classes of aircraft related to each other. Um, the fact that we were helicopter pilots and seaplane pilots was of enormous value when we got to know some pilots on the Fujifilm Limp and they were looking for some extra crew members to, uh, to work on temporary basis when they did things like fly cameras for the U.S. Tennis Open because both helicopters and seaplanes off operate on off of airports and you have to be very wind aware when you're, uh, when you're flying those and those help an enormous amount when we were learning or <laughs> trying to learn to fly the uh, Fujifilm airship. So what you're suggesting is things we had already learned helped us learn new things and that's why we got that opportunity. Is that what you're, Absolutely. Is that what you're suggesting? So are you gonna tell them anything about those tall promises well, we made? Well, we made two tall promises. The first tall promise we made is the single most important consideration in getting ahead. And that's a very big statement, but what we're suggesting it is, is play. Have a passion, lots of interest, always learning, and yet again, play. So it's, we, we consider that the single most important uh, consideration in advancing yourself. And our second tall promise was to talk about the dynamite tool that gets results from people every time, and that is TNT, establish trust with people, find out their needs, and triumph by finding a solution to those needs. Now, the way you get ahead in life is make a contribution to other people. We suggested that you do something that people will pay you for. Um, and uh, we have a friend, a guy named Peter Diamandis, and Peter Diamandis was the original head of the X Prize, and, uh, and he, he's a big believer in maximizing what you do in the world. And he says, if you want to become a billionaire, you need to make life better for a billion people. And, and if you look around, everyone, how many people in here have a cell phone? That's what Steve Jobs did. You'd be Jobs better off done. to ask who does not have a <laughs> right, cell phone. That's what Steve Jobs did. And, and it's a, it's, the cell phone is fantastic. It connects you to the, the whole database of the world. You're sitting here and you can find about anything you want with your cell phone. And that's someone who became, I'm sure, a billionaire. And he did it by improving the lives of, of, of more than a billion people. There are seven billion people in the world and I believe that I'm correct when I say at least four billion of the seven billion people in the world own a cell phone. Uh, when we, we did a trip around the world, we had what you call handlers. When you go to some strange airport and into a strange country, you, you pay someone and they'll meet you and they'll solve all your problems as you're going along. We had a handler in Scotland and his cell phone played uh, Scotland the Brave. And when, then we flew from, uh, where in Scotland? We flew from uh, Scotland to Morocco, and when we got to Morocco, we had a handler. His cell phone played call to prayer, but they each had cell phones, and they used them in exactly the same way, and they could have called each other. They could have, each one of them could have gotten on the internet and found out about any piece of information, and that's what Steve Jobs did for people. He made life better for at least a billion people. So play Scrabble with TNT and you'll see how play can lead to your success or more success. And if you want to learn more about the philosophy we've developed, you could go to kingschools.com slant lift hyphen book. And we're going to have books available, I understand, Brian, uh, during the cocktail hour this evening. Uh, and we'll be around to sign them for anyone that uh, wants one. Thank you very much for being here. We really appreciate it. And I hope you all learn from each other. You all have great stories to yeah. tell. And what a room full of spectacular people. It's good to see you folks. Thanks very much. So, Thank you.